Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Um, today we're going to be testing my very first uh, sand my blades. Uh, they're a combination of uh, 1095 sandwiched in between two layers, one on each side of uh, just regular old mild steel. Um, the other day, for some reason, I got to thinking about it and I thought, you know, it's about time I learned how to forge weld. Um, I've never really been all that interested in um, uh, sand my blades or Damascus or anything like that. Um, always been more of a, a single, uh, a homogeneous uh, steel blade kind of guy, I guess. But I guess for no other reason than I just didn't know how to do it, I decided, you know, it's about time I learned. So I grabbed a couple of pieces of steel and, um, you know, started heating them up, or read everything on the internet, started heating them up real hot, had some 20 mule team borax handy, and started trying to get them to weld. And it really didn't work out very well. I mean, I've got, got that steel in there and it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. I mean, we're talking yellow, almost a little bit of white. You know, the steel's looking runny and everything. Pull it out really fast, smash it with a hammer, let it cool down, break it. And the two layers, you know, came apart real easy. Um, then I ran into a fellow that I met at Blade uh, last year by the name of uh, Jim Rodebaugh. Ran into him at the uh, local uh, ranch supply house and was telling him, you know, that I, uh, you know, because he works in a lot of Damascus. I was telling him, you know, that, um, that I was having a lot of problems with, you know, learning how to forge weld. So I went out and visited him in his shop and I took some samples. And he looks at him and he says, this is what you're doing wrong, this is how to fix it. So the next day, uh, after a, a good day visit with him, uh, the next day I came or came out into the shop, fired up the forge, and I'd say within an hour, got my first couple of what I considered to be good uh, forge welds, um, about another hour or two worth of playing with it, um, decided to go ahead and forge out a knife and see what happened and this one came out out of that one. Um, I was so excited I went ahead and, and uh, did a quick heat treat on it, finished it out, and uh, did some cut testing with it. I think this side's the better one. Yeah. So you got the mild steel here and the 1095 uh, you know with the little squiggly lines where it was ground away and everything. Um, so anyway, so this is going to be a video. What I did was, uh, like I said, I forged that first blade on, I think, Friday. Saturday, um, I went ahead and forged out four more of them. Well, welded them up and then and then forged them out. Um, and then put them through my, my standard 1095 heat treat. Um, I think I ground them Monday, hand sanded them Tuesday, uh, anyway, so I've got four or five blades here. We'll take a look. These right here are going to be our testers for today. We've got the first one that I did. Uh, like I said, I just did a quick heat treat uh, in the forge with this one. It was also welded really, really hot. Um, and then the next day, what I did was I started off um, the same setup this setup right here so you got a bar of mild uh, quarter inch thick pieces and then you know a two inch piece of 1095 and then another two inch piece of mild steel on top now of course this I just cut this to show you guys but uh, I ground the the mating surfaces of all these so that they'd be nice and clean put them together in a vise uh, MIG welded the corners so that they would stay together Heated them up in the forge, fluxed them very, very lightly, lightly with some flux that Jim gave me. I um, can't remember the name of it, but I've got a, a, a can of it on order. Um, it's anhydrous bo uh, borax. And then brought them up to temp and then went ahead and um, did one quick pass down this side, flipped it over down that side with the, the power hammer, put them back in the forge, heated them back up, pulled them back out, did another light run uh, on either side, and then proceeded to forge the bar out into something like, uh, well, maybe something like this. Eh, more like this. Uh, only oversized, and then um, 
and then just cut the profile out. These are some of the scraps. And then, um, you know, cut the profile out, ground it, uh, and went to cleaned it up and went to heat treat. This blade right here was done at uh, a pretty high heat, um, a bright yellow. And then this one, I turned the forge down a little bit and, uh, you know, forged it out at a, a lower temp or welded it and forged it out at a lower temperature and so on and so forth. This one right here was welded at a bright orange heat. I don't have a parameter in my, my forge to be able to tell you exact temperatures. I'm kind of thinking about setting that up, but I haven't done it yet. So we went ahead and uh, I got it all put into my log book. See if we can get you here so you can see the log book. You can hit pause if you actually want to read all this chicken scratch in here. Uh, this table right here, um, I was going to do three runs worth of cuts on each one of them. And then I thought, you know, um, I'm just going to go ahead and see how the welds took before I get too into that. So uh, the one with the quickie heat treat, you can really tell it, uh, you know, I forged it really hot and... Um, I think I damaged the steel there. Uh, the rest of them, they look pretty good. Uh, measurements on all four of them, or all five of them. The first measurement is the thickness at the edge of the shoulder. The second measurement is the thickness a quarter inch back from the edge. The third measurement is um, at the spine. And then the fourth measurement, that one was kind of a tough one to get for you. Um, that is the thickness of the portion of the blade that's 1095. So let me set you back down here and grab one of them. This, I'm kind of doubting we'll be able to see it in the viewfinder of my camera. It might come up on the on the video itself, but um, so in a spine shot, and these have been etched, since I just sandwiched them together, you know, there wasn't, uh, you know, the spines weren't rolled over. So there's all, there's three pieces right here. If I keep moving around, maybe you'll get lucky and get a good shot in there. But you'll be able to see um, a darker line down the center than on the edges. And what that is, is that's telling you about how thick, ah, right there, right there you can see. So that darker part right there, that's the 1095, and the lighter uh, steel above and below are the mild steel. So that fourth measurement is uh, an eyeball measurement with my mic uh, of the thickness of the 1095, somewhere right around here where, where my mark would go. So anyway, so we have those those measurements uh, to play with, so we can go back and look and say, because one of the things I'm really wondering about here is, okay, so this is basically 40 thousandths thick 1095 with mild steel on either side. Um, when we do the flex test, we'll be able to see, you know, how much how much hard 1095 and how much soft mild steel is needed to produce a blade that's got an, a decent amount of lateral strength. So anyway, so um, I think what we'll do first is go ahead and test the tips. Uh, I should say this, the, the one that was um, welded at the lowest temperature, that one cut the best and I'm really hoping that uh, that I'll end up saving this one. So we're going to set it off to the side and not uh, destroy it because I'd kind of like to throw a handle on it and carry it for a while. But So I'll get you real close here to the, to the block. We'll do some uh, tip tests. You know where we drive the, the blade point first into the um, the 2 by 4 and I've got you kind of perched up on a chair here right now because uh, I wanted to keep the tripod short so that when we go to the vise uh, you'll get a good picture of it there. So anyway I've heard these uh, San Mai laminates are um, they're extremely tough and 
the fact that uh, it's really hard to break them, but they don't have as much lateral strength because the mild steel on either side, um, while it supports the 1095 inside, it doesn't uh, give it any resistance to, to flex. So we'll just do a couple of fairly light ones. That's in there about oh a quarter inch. And that one, the tip snapped off. And I can't really see much of the, the grain. It's real thin right there. So now we go to the hottest one. That one seems to be fairly good. Of course, it's quite a bit thicker. Quite a bit thicker up here at the, uh, at the point. And I'm not really jamming these in very hard because, uh, well, I didn't round the, round the tangs off. So they're at pretty sharp 90 degree corners. See that one uh, took just a very slight bend. That one took a little bit more of a bend up in this area right here. We'll do that one again. Yeah, there we go. We're getting more of a bend there, but no breaking. And remember that uh, that 1095 at the the exposed 1095 is just as hard as I can possibly get it and still pass the uh, the edge flex test on a brass rod. So anyway, so now we'll go to the vise. Let me pick you up and move you over. I'm going to do this on my post vise today. Let's see. We'll back out and then get you just as close as we can. So there's, there's two tests that I want to run here. Pretty much what I want to see is does the mild steel support the 1095 in such a manner that the 1095 won't break when you do one, two, three, four 90 degree flexes. And then I also want to separate, if I can, the 1095 and the mild steel layers. I want to see what it takes to cause delamination in these blades. So let me grab the first one. It'll be the one with uh, the quickie heat treat and a set of safety glasses. We're going to clamp up, let's say right there, and we pad the jaws of the vise with a scrap of leather. You can use uh, wood shims or uh, um, steel as long as you've got a nice rounded edge right here, because otherwise that edge will dig into the, the side of the blade and cause it to break before it probably would otherwise. Let me make sure you can see that. Oh, that's right. I was going to use the torque wrench today. Got a torque wrench with a jig. Clamps onto the blade. Just a regular old torque wrench. It's kind of old and beat up, so I'm not sure if it's really going to be able to read because these are pretty thin blades. So we'll grab it right there. This one I'm not expecting to make it to a 90. Not with the way that... Uh, that tip busted. Yeah, we're not. Uh, maybe seven to eight pounds. Now, see, this is interesting. Okay, so. So part of the mild or the this layer of mild broke, the 1095 broke, 
and this layer of mild steel is still holding it together. The grain looks, uh, yeah, the grain looks pretty big in this one, which probably indicates way too high of a welding temperature, but that's all right. Like I said, these first ones are just testers. Okay, so that's the first test. Now the second test I want to run, because that broke clean all the way through. There was no real delamination going on there. So the other test, we're going to twist it. So let's grab a hold up here. See if I can do this. Well, let's see. I want to be able to see what you're seeing in the viewfinder. So, okay, here we go. Oh, edge ripped out. It's still holding on. There we go. And I am not seeing, oh, there's a little, little part right up in there. I don't really, I wouldn't call that a delamination. I would call that more the mild ripped away from the, uh, from the 1095. And it looks like it took part of the 1095 with it. There's the other half. Okay, so that's one. Now we'll do the other one. This right here is stamp number one, so it was the one that was welded up at the highest. Uh, it was at a good solid yellow, maybe even a bright yellow. Okay, so we're reading about five on the torque wrench already, so. That's not quite five. Maybe four pounds or so to flex it. Like I said, this is an old beat up torque wrench. And it doesn't really uh, read in the low torques very well. Now see that one did the same as the first one but we got an awful lot more flex out of it. Two pieces separated. And it's kind of the same deal. I'm not seeing any huge delaminations in there. Or really much of any at all. Like I said, this is my first time really testing these welded type blades. Alright, so now let's go with the twist test. Heck, that almost made a 90 degree twist. And there again. We've got some, uh, those welds look like they're really holding together pretty well. Oh, let's see, you already saw the tip there. Okay, now we'll go for the next one. Now 
This is number two. It's a little bit... Eh, they were all pretty close to being ground the same. I mean, within five to ten thousandths. That one's reading it. We got about six or seven foot pounds. I was wondering if that one was going to break or not. Aha, look at there. That one we do have a lamination on, or a delamination on. Now we'll go find that other piece later. And see the area in between the the two different steels is bright and shiny, like they were ripped from each other. But that was some pretty uh, that was a pretty serious flex there. We made it past ninety. Straighten it back up enough to be able to get the twisting test on. Oh, you can hear that crunching sound. And there again we have... This is pulled up, but it's still attached in there. And all the surfaces are real nice, bright, shiny, look like they're, they were welded together fairly well. We got two and a half minutes left of tape. Let's see if we can't get to the last one done. So this one right here is the third one. Got a little bit less heat than the last one for welding. Yeah, this torque wrench isn't uh, isn't reading light enough for these flexes. And that one went back to uh, just like the first two. Went through the one layer of mild and the 1095 and then is holding on by the mild steel. Not right there, there's no separation between the three layers. We got one minute left. Okay, a twist test. We got a crack started at the edge and now it's ripping its way through the blade. Boy, look at that. That looks just, uh, that was really torn out of there. Looks like uh, I'll have to go ahead and shut this one off and do another one. Uh, try to see if I can't show you the the uh, the brakes and everything a little little bit better in that one. Anyway, hope you enjoyed watching some nice destructive 
tests of uh, some noon blades. Hope you enjoyed it.